Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Uh, it's my pleasure today to introduce Valerie Petrushin, who is a senior researcher at Accenture Technology Labs in Chicago and is now visiting Seattle, attending KDD, and graciously volunteered to come here and give a talk and spend some time with us. So Valerie has done a lot of work in many areas, and today he's going to talk uh, about an interesting topic in emotion and speech and what you can do about it. Valerie? Thank you. Is it, is it, oh, it's down. It's, <laughs> it's literally down. <laughs> okay. Can you hear him? Okay. I can. <laughs> uh, okay, Accenture Technology Labs, it's a uh, very applied lab uh, um, and rather small if you compare to the size of the company. Company now it's uh, about probably 80,000 people, uh, consultant, consultants uh, and uh, in more than 50 countries. And, uh, and technology labs, uh, it's actually labs. We have two labs, research and development. And research lab uh, is uh, rather small. It's, uh, about probably uh, 60 people uh, in uh, uh, three uh, sites. Uh, in Chicago, it's approximately half of these people. In Palo Alto, Silicon Valley, everybody is, is, would like to be there. And um, in uh, Satya Antipolis, in France, it's a uh, European Silicon Valley, actually. Um, and uh, our actual mission is to, as research uh, lab, is to uh, uh, watch what uh, kind of technology emerges and uh, how uh, this technology could be useful for business. Uh, and we are working in uh, ubiquitous computing, sensors, uh, multimedia, speech, uh, in all this, all this area, and uh, it's uh, rather applied research. Uh, we are doing some research, uh, close to say basic research, then we need to develop some uh, demos or prototypes and uh, show this uh, to our clients at the workshops. Uh, okay. To some extent, we actually in a, um, we create some image to the company, and that's why uh, the company likes us. <laughs> uh, and um, I, uh, I'm with the, the lab uh, almost seven years, and I did uh, a number of uh, research uh, in speech, in multimedia, and in uh, data mining. And today I, uh, I, I would like to talk about uh, emotion recognition and signal uh, in speech signal. It uh, actually was my first uh, project at uh, Extension Technology Labs uh, six years ago or so. Um, and I, I will... Uh, after some introduction, which uh, uh, actually defines some terms, uh, psychological terms. I'm not psychologist, you know, I'm applied mathematician and computer scientist. Um, and then uh, I will talk about why we're doing this and how we did this. Um, what is the motion? Uh, some um, definition is emotion is the psychic and physical reaction. Subjectively experience a strong feeling 
and physiological environment changes that prepare the body for intermediate vigorous action. And it's true for uh, some emotions, for uh, so-called maybe basic emotions uh, like anger and fear, but uh, uh, psychologists are looking at this much wider and they have a taxonomy of uh, several dozens of emotions and uh, among them such as uh, like love, hate, you know, and it's, uh, uh, and some of them is uh, very uh, difficult to actually uh, detect if you have a very narrow uh, channel like uh, speech or speech and image and if you don't have any information about the context or uh, the personality of uh, a subject. And um, about terms, emotional state. Emotional state is the internal, internal state which is not observable. And emotional experience, it's uh, a process, it's actually what uh, a subject feels. And um, emotional expression, that's what we can see. Um, and emotion actually considered as a rather short, a rather short event. It lasts uh, seconds. Uh, mood is a more longer, and uh, it uh, all, all of them are uh, based on uh, personality uh, traits, personality features. Uh, different people express emotions differently based on their. Um, many factors which actually form the personality. And the emotion is a very complex process. It has some physical component which include uh, autonomic nervous system and bodily effects and uh, cognitive interpretive component, motivational behavioral component and the kind of meta component, subjective experiential component. And they interact with each other, a somatic or physical component is uh, some uh, physical uh, processes like shaking, trembling, pile erection is when your hair stands up, uh, and uh, motivational behavioral component. Uh, uh, it's uh, your inclination to act or not to act. Uh, it also includes facial expressions and some uh, other expressions. And um, cognitive interpretive component, it's uh, based on a, on a person's goals, wishes, expectations, and uh, uh, say uh, you are angry because you are not reach your goal. Butterflies. Butterflies when you are, you know, worrying about something. Yeah, this is a term. <laughs> when you're nervous, say, before exam or... <laughs> it's, it's, it's some uh, term, yeah, it's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm not sure that psychologists, uh, uh, among psychologists, you know, there are different schools, uh, different groups, and they actually uh, argue with each other. I, I'm not a psychologist, you know, I try to stay away a little bit. It's just, and, um, uh, and subjective experiential component is a kind of meta uh, level when you uh, all, uh, combine all these three. And if uh, you look, say, on some um, uh, values of uh, the, uh, these components, uh, for, say, for fear, uh, expressive component that has uh, somatic behavioral and communicating. Uh, and it's uh, somatic, it's some uh, 
physical movement, you know, like shivering. And um, behavioral, you, it's a, it's a, a little bit high level uh, component. You you can uh, uh, say if if you are afraid, you, you can freeze and uh, and wait what happens and, and analyze the situation. Uh, screaming, one of the uh, verbal, and also uh, in, uh, during this process, uh, information processing is going on. You pay attention to some something, uh, and you evaluate um, evaluate uh, the situation. And after this, you need to make some decision what to do, what, how to solve this problem, how to, what to do next. And if you look at some psychologist uh, classifications of emotions, it's, uh, it's uh, rather, uh, say, a, a, Oh, uh, what looks first in this, and then I, I have a comment. Uh, this uh, emotions, uh, this there are some events, uh, agents or objects which actually uh, uh, raise these emotions, and uh, there are some uh, actually uh, goals, norms, and attitudes which actually evaluate this uh, uh, objects and uh, events. And based on this, we can classify emotions according to uh, the goals. Uh, is it uh, achieved or not? Uh, Norm-based, say, pride or shame or admiration, it's based on the norm of the society. And uh, some attitudes like love, and hate, and some compound emotions, uh, and it's, uh, you know, something doing uh, not in standard way, and uh, your goal is not achieved. Uh, say, somebody cuts in line ahead of you. And if, if you look at this, it's, it's, uh, it's very hard to actually uh, find some uh, evidence which can you classify this em emotion uh, based on uh, uh, what you can hear and see. Another another classification it's uh, based on actually reward and and punishment, and it also not uh, very, you know, easy to infer. And uh, the, that's why uh, there is a kind of gap between what psychologists think and uh, classify as emotions and what we can actually uh, recognize. And uh, for recognition, this is a so-called activation evaluation wheel, and it has two dimensions. Where one is the intensity of emotion, activation, active, act, act, activities, <laughs> and another it's a valence. It's a, is it positive or negative? And uh, they put so-called uh, basic emotions. Many psychologists uh, do not uh, recognize this uh, existence of these basic emotions because they are looking from quite different perspective. And uh, on this wheel, any, any point uh, responds to some uh, emotional state. But it's still very hard to uh, actually use this. We try to use this for labeling emotions, you know, for people to label, to assign some. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, emotions like sexually, even different subcultures have different, actually, kind of different uh, way to express emotion. And, and this is true, and uh, I, 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 I will talk a little bit later about it. And, um, and we try to use this wheel uh, uh, for labels, and it's, uh, it's, it's very hard for, for people to do this, actually, to uh, recognize, say, on this uh, uh, scale what kind of emotion is this. Uh, that's why we actually just, you know, multiple choices. It's, it's, it's better for some. <laughs> subset of this, uh, say, basic emotions for labeling. Uh, but, you know, if you have this uh, um, multiple choice, each, each emotion actually may have uh, some quality, I mean, uh, uh, some uh, better, better portray some emotions, uh, some people not. Okay, uh, why it's very important uh, first, it's some uh, theoretical aspects, and uh, and emotions uh, and expressing emotions interact with language uh, because uh, uh, there are some rules how to actually uh, say um, question uh, the voice going uh, uh, the pitch going up at the end of the question in English. Then. And uh, uh, for surprise, the pitch also goes up. And uh, you can be surprised, but it's not a question, actually. Uh, and uh, emotions interact with, say, typical uh, prosodic patterns of uh, different linguistic uh, phenomena. And um, it's also business applications for call centers, security, improving uh, automatic speech recognition, and uh, learning applications, uh, lifelike agents, uh, learning language etiquette, student modeling. Uh, say, if, if we recognize the student uh, uh, current state, we can actually uh, learn something. Uh, does it like this uh, course? Uh, does it uh, uh, learn something uh, from this uh, interaction. And um, uh, there are some works in this area. Klaus Scherer from Geneva University, he, he, he is actually a psychologist, and he is doing this research for probably 20 years or more. And uh, Alex Weibel uh, did some research on how emotions uh, uh, influence speech recognition. Uh, Ron Covey and his group, it's a linguist, and they try to uh, learn how emotions interact with language. Uh, Janet Khan from MIT, now she is with Motorola. Uh, she did her dissertation on emotional expression. And Jan Nuri and his colleagues from Dundee the University, they also did some research on expression. Nick Campbell, uh, uh, he's uh, actually doing a little bit uh, wider uh, research. He uh, said that uh, it's not only emotions important, it's the quality of voice important. If I'm talking to my wife, I'm talking different if I'm talking to my mother-in-law, or to my friends, or to my kids. And how we can distinguish all these styles. Of and uh, they're doing a, a quality of speech research, uh, including emotions. And uh, there are some other, uh, there is an interest uh, from companies like Accenture. 
here. And uh, some other companies like Sony, uh, uh, Sony created this Ibo robot uh, who uh, interact with a human and they uh, need to understand emotions and express emotions. And uh, when I started this, uh, it was six, uh, almost seven years ago, um, actually there is no databases uh, for emotional speech uh, were available. Uh, Sudas has some, some, uh, but it's not enough to do uh, Good research. Now, uh, there is a, a database. It's uh, emotional quality speech and transcripts. And it's a rather, a rather big database, but it's uh, emotional numbers. It's, it's numbers. It's only numbers. And uh, Toby, it's uh, another database, but it's uh, actually related to uh, different in, uh, international contours uh, than to emotions. Now there is about uh, 30, it's, it's, it's got much more popular recently and uh, now there is about 30 databases. Most of them are not available. They, I, I, pro I produce two. Two of them. It's a proprietary databases. Okay. Back in 1998, we were interested in, uh, in doing emotion recognition with some business application. But uh, it was no databases. Uh, and what we did, we start to create a just small database which uh, five emotions, happiness, anger, sadness, fear, and neutral and emotional state, and with a rather high quality of s signal. And uh, what uh, was on the agenda is to learn how human recognize emotion uh, and select the most distinguished features and create <laughs> the recognizer. And um, uh, compared to uh, how a computer can recognize, and because we uh, try to do this for business, uh, the objective was to create a speaker independent recognition. And I asked my colleague, and 30 people take part in this endeavor. And it's uh, four sentences. This is not what I expected. I'll be right there. Tomorrow is my birthday. I'm getting married next week. And uh, they uh, pronounce this with five emotions. It's actually a kind of uh, artificial. Uh, but if, uh, when you, it's it's a it's a you know um, a kind of. Uh, argument that this is database, it's a, it has emotional utterances, but it's not natural. Yes, it's not natural. But uh, when you're watching movies, you recognize emotions. Is it natural emotions? This is actors. They play for you. Is it natural or not? Uh, that's why we uh, started. And uh, when you, uh, it's uh, it's much easier, you know, to control these emotions if you do this non-natural but uh, uh, good enough. It's 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 a it's a regular regular people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But some of them is good. And uh, uh, and we don't uh, you know we don't accept that all of them. We did some evaluation after this. So did you take picture as well, and video? No, no, no. Because we are uh, very interested in in mostly call centers. You know, this is uh, 
Okay, and uh, and then twenty three people evaluated these recordings, and this is how how people recognize emotions. And we can see that anger is most recognizable than sadness and neutral, normal. Happiness and fear is pretty bad recognizable. So, but then if it, a lot of people who say certain things like, uh, yeah, when they get sad, in addition to the words you have, do you allow people to use those? No, no. Uh, it's just a word. Yeah, it's, it's just a sentence. Say, uh, I have a sentence with. Uh, okay, let me try, okay? Okay. Uh, I'm sad. Okay. I'm getting married next week. I'm getting married next week. Okay? It's, it's different? <laughs> okay, and uh, if you look at uh, standard deviation, that anger also uh, rather good. Uh, standard deviation is the lowest for anger. How many people did this? Sorry? How many people did this? 30. 30 people uh, portrayed and 23 uh, evaluated. This is 23. Oh. 23 evaluated. Yeah. And some of them actually were who portrayed, but it was like two months time difference. And um, sadness and happiness, not bad actually also. This is actor statistic. Okay. <laughs> yeah, ask, ask, ask who recently did this. <laughs> you have to use some other. Do you have all the samples? Yeah, I, I, I have samples. Uh, yeah, no, I used to play this uh, samples, but uh, now I, all, all of them. It, it, it would be interesting to see how the same person, you know, the same person uh, does this. But I, I don't have this uh, database uh, or person-wise on this computer. Uh, I have just all these uh, <laughs> sentences. <laughs> and if you look on actors, at how people, uh, how good people uh, express em uh, express emotions, portray emotions, okay? uh, then uh, we can see that anger is also uh, the best. And, and uh, but standard deviation is much higher. Uh, it means that there are good actors and there are, there are bad actors. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's no, 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 it's 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 uh, it's actors, it's all these people, and we uh, uh, this uh, we look how how people recognize emotions, okay, and this is how they portray emotions. It it seems. Uh, Actors, it's all, all these people who, uh, who participate in this experiment, okay? We call them actors. There are actors and evaluators. Okay? <laughs> yeah, we did not... Uh, and this is uh, how well, say, say, you portrayed some emotions, okay? And now 23... People listen to your emotions. Okay, so, so, okay. so you're telling them it's not a classification test now. It's just a binary thing where you're telling them the detector is trying to be happy. And I see no, that. no. Uh, 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 um, you try to recognize emotions, and uh, if, if I try to portray anger, and you recognize anger, 
Okay, uh, this is plus. If, uh, if, if not, it's minus. So isn't that the same thing as the previous? It's not the same because uh, it's, uh, it's actors, act, actor wise. You know, it's 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 uh, you're looking on how this this people portray for each each person. Uh, this this it's how how you recognize for each utterance. For each utterance, how well it recognizable as this this particular emotion, okay? And this is how well a particular person doing. It means the it, it means the, there are some people who recognize all emotions uh, correctly for the, uh, for the actor. Yeah. This, this sort of same, same, the same recognition data, just a different way to Yeah, it's, 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 it's different view. It's, it's, uh, okay, and this is, uh, it's a uh, so called self reference. It's how people recognize their own emotions. It's two months past. And you can see that some, some people, uh, doesn't recognize the happy emotions. <laughs> the zeros, you know, the zeros. <laughs> but uh, in general, it's much higher. The rate is much higher. And uh, uh, okay. And if you um, uh, the, the there is so-called. P level concordance of data set. It means that we uh, pull out all the utterances which at least 70% of evaluators said this is particular emotion. Okay? And uh, if we do this, we can see that for 70% uh, level, we have uh, about 52% of all data people agree 70 percent at least 70 percent of people agree that this data represent this particular emotion okay and if you look at the distribution it's more or less more or less regular except uh, fair, fair. and if if you uh, If you put this level higher, you can see that only angry and angry utterances uh, more recognizable. Say uh, for 100 percent, when everybody agrees that this this utterance particular represent particular emotions, most of them it's uh, like 66 percent of them it's uh, anger. It means that anger is most recognizable, yeah? and maybe is most important from biological viewpoint. <laughs> okay, and uh, what we did, we uh, based on this evaluation, we selected uh, the most recognizable utterances and uh, used them for uh, for creating recognizer and. Uh, we use uh, acoustic variables and the mental frequency it's prosodic energy, speaking rate, hormones and hormones bandwidth and uh, what I did, I extracted all these uh, variables from each utterance and do some statistics, means the standard deviation, minimum maximum range F0 slope and relative voice energy and then I, uh, I I applied some, yeah, and uh, this is some utterances. It's the same person pronounce uh, this tomorrow is my dose day, and uh, the the top one is uh, neutral. Then it's anger, happiness, sadness, and fear. And you can see that uh, fundamental 
frequency is changes very much. This is another example for uh, fundamental frequency, but it's also um, for four months. Four months are same speaker. Huh? Yeah. Same yeah. The, the same speaker, the same, and it's you see it's different. And uh, and we used some uh, feature selection algorithm to uh, pick up the best features. And uh, the top features, uh, this is set of eight features. It's F0 maximum, F0 standard deviation range mean, and bandwidth for four months, uh, first and second four months, and uh, energy standard deviation we can rate. And uh, the next two features, it's F0 slope, uh, F0 F, F1 maximum, and uh, more for, for more features. It's uh, for uh, energy and for uh, four months. And we use these three sets and uh, train neural networks and some other algorithm for recognizer. And uh, first, it's uh, for some baseline. I edit the nearest neighbor classifier for this. And then uh, it was, you know, six years ago, neural networks were still very popular. Now probably SVM would be the first choice for this. And maybe I, I, I would get some improvement, 5% five, five or so. But uh, at, at this time, we did this neural, uh, neural network. And uh, used different uh, and ensembles of neural networks, and we used different techniques, uh, books, uh, bootstrapping and uh, cross-validation for creating this ensemble. And uh, also I tried to actually do a set of experts. It means that each neural network is an expert for one emotion and then combine the output of these experts. And let's look at the results. k nearest neighbor On average, it's, uh, it's, it's much better than average, as I say, that if, if we just guess. But it's uh, about 53, 53%, 55%. This is, yeah, this is for different number of features, for eight features, 10 features, and four. 14 features. And you see, it's, uh, if, if you have less features, it works better. Yeah, afraid is, is very bad. Uh, the density, it's, it's, it's much less data actually in this data set. And uh, the density is very low, that's why it's a uh, uh, nearest neighbor doesn't work well. So, do you have any idea what the variance is on these numbers? Uh, I don't have this uh, in, uh, but for, for, uh, it's, it's, it's not very much. It's, it's, it's about 2-3%. It's not. So, that's frame by frame. Also, you could frame by frame. So, each frame has 14 feet of What do you mean by frame? Yes, yeah, it's, it's the whole utterance. Uh, we use these positive features, okay, and uh, the unit which is uh, useful for prosody, it's a phrase. And phrase lasts from uh, one second to three seconds, okay? And uh, all this data, it's, uh, it's some averages uh, on, on the phrase. So, to what extent would you say that this is uh, utterance dependent on, like, you can identify Okay, I, I, I will uh, I will answer later. Okay, I read it some. <laughs> um, no, it's 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 uh, for all the utterances, and uh, uh, actually, yeah. 
10 years later, you string all these you know, like F0 numbers and put them into a big rectangle? Uh, each, each utterance is one point for, for this space. Okay? Oh, I see. Okay. So that's a great plot. So it would be like 14 times, but like it, almost the total dimensionality can be 10 years later. I did not get what you asked. Yeah. For the whole utterance. Yeah. For phrase. This is this is short utterance. Okay. If 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 I. Example you show. I mean, it goes like this. But one of them is max. The other one is delta. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. And the average. Okay. If if it's if it's a long utterance, say if you say. Uh, in Seattle, we have aquarium, we have this, we have that, we have that, okay? This is several uh, phrases, and in this case, uh, we should cut and, and do this for each. Well, it delta, dynamic It's not segmental, it's uh, super segmental features. Yes. Yes. And uh, neural networks. This is an actual ensemble of neural networks. We did this for neural networks, and it's uh, uh, and it was on average about 60. And uh, for ensemble of neural networks, uh, we used <coughs> ensembles which are trained on different. Uh, sets of data and then uh, merge the, the results, uh, say, uh, by uh, simple voting. And we use, uh, like, uh, different number of uh, uh, neural networks in, 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 in ensembles. This is for 15 neural networks in each ensemble. And we can see this is for different number of features and for different number of neural n neurons in uh, hidden layer and uh, you can see uh, the performance and on average it's uh, it's about 70 percent and uh, sometimes it's uh, even better for when you have less features than more features and it's uh, uh, sadness and uh, anger is uh, a little bit better and it was very encouraging for for us uh, for business application because anger is the most important for business you know, if your customer happy, it's okay. But if he is angry, this is a problem. And uh, uh, and this uh, for expert neural networks, uh, this is the recognition for each expert. And for some experts, uh, they have rather uh, rather good. Recognition that this is not this emotion because probably data is much more for norms than uh, for this. And then the problem how to unite, how to merge this uh, data for uh, experts. And what we did, we used just a simple rule, you know, just uh, who. Uh, Just, just pick up the maximum and uh, this is the motion. Okay. And uh, another is uh, uh, we put another neural network uh, classifier which actually has as inputs the results of this expert and try to learn the result. And it works a little bit better. You can see that on average it's, it looks better than a simple rule, but uh, altogether uh, ensemble of neural networks. To, looks much better than uh, this even learned uh, rule. And uh, after this, we created a demo. It's a, it's a, it's a game you can play against computer who recognize emotions uh, the best. And I, I have this demo, but it doesn't work on Windows XP. <laughs> If you have, uh, it, it works on uh, NT, it works on uh, Windows 2000, it works on uh, uh, 
2003 server. It's actually NT technology probably. But it doesn't work on XP. Uh, because it, it, it was created in MATLAB and MATLAB uh, did something uh, different for um, NT, XP. Uh, and this game, you just uh, listen to the some utterance and try to recognize emotions, and then computer recognizes emotions. And if if you are wrong, and computer writes, and computer gets scores, and, uh, uh, and you can play. And you can play uh, against each other too. You know, it's a it's a full fledged game. Uh, And uh, then we uh, use this for call centers. And for call centers, what we did, it, it's uh, uh, call centers were actually interested in uh, agitation and angry, you know, if, if, if it's angry or not. And uh, we did two emotional states, you know, we downscaled actually our, this research. And, uh, but it was much uh, worse quality of signal. And what we did, we uh, actually uh, asked people to relabel. Uh, and uh, what we did, we auto automatically find phrases uh, using the largest pause in an utterance and uh, uh, try to find phrases uh, from one to three seconds. And then uh, give this uh, chunks to, to people to listen and to uh, actually uh, label them, and based on this data, we train this uh, ensemble of neural networks, and this is the result of this uh, different ensembles. And uh, uh, on average, it's uh, it's uh, it's about 77, a little bit higher than 77 percent. And we created a prototype for call centers which actually accept uh, some messages, uh, analyze them, and uh, uh, sort emotions, and then uh, 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 <coughs> an operator can uh, listen to these emotions. And you can see those blocks, chunks. Each chunk, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, a kind of phrase, and uh, aut automatically extracted. And uh, for this phrase, uh, we apply this uh, algorithm and uh, uh, define this, uh, is it, is it uh, agitation or not. And you can see uh, that some, some phrases uh, agitated and some uh, rather, uh, rather calm. And uh, on average, you can sum this and uh, on average uh, have some uh, score for each of the utterance. And this utterance is uh, then sorted according to emotional content, or it uh, also can be sorted according to some other parameters like duration uh, uh, and some uh, uh, percentage of silence, you know, some uh, date and time, and uh, all, all this. And, uh, and and you can listen actually, and uh, and uh, this system it's also maps. Uh, each call center has uh, some some people who are very uh, good trained, and uh, they uh, actually uh, uh, call back to this nasty nasty customers, and uh, the system actually optimizes uh, assignments. It's 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 assign uh, these people to call back to the most. Uh, Agitated <laughs> customers, <laughs> uh, and uh, that's what we done, uh, say, in uh, 1998, 99, and uh, the results. Uh, we learn a little bit how uh, how people recognize and portray emotion. And we uh, did this automatic emotion recognition and developed this system and applied for patents. And 
now six patterns already issued, which cover all these applications of emotions, uh, recognition for call centers, for fraud detection, for some other. Uh, and uh, and this is works, you know. It's I I call this cowboy approach. You know, when you just collect data, apply some uh, data mining techniques or. Uh, pattern recognition techniques and get some results and uh, and it works it works but uh, um, what we actually learned about emotions we can recognize them but what we actually and my company was very happy I I'm, uh, was you know a little bit not happy uh, that uh, I, I, I would learn more. And um, in the year 2000, uh, at the uh, Spoken Language Processing Conference at Beijing, I met a linguist uh, who is doing emotion research, and we decided to create a database for a Russian language. Uh, she, she, she was teaching uh, English to Japanese, now she is teaching Russian to Canadian. Uh, and uh, in, 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 in between she visited her, her uh, alma mater university in St. Petersburg and uh, collected some data. Uh, and uh, we decided to do this and we actually created a database, a so-called Truslana Russian Language Effective Speech Database, and it uh, contains, you know, simulated emotions, six emotional states, 61 native speakers, and it's about 3,600 utterances. And uh, uh, the, actually, the goal of this was not just create another database but uh, or create a database for Russian but uh, to create a database which uh, can help uh, learn the interaction between language and emotions it actually uh, was a much more theoretically based approach and what uh, she did she selected uh, different kind of uh, sentences which uh, represent uh, different in international patterns for Russian language. It's, it's ten different patterns. And we use these uh, ten utterances for 61 subjects. Uh, most of them are short female uh, because it's linguistic department of the university, you know. Uh, and, uh, and we try to equip this database with uh, all kinds of tools. We extract a lot of data and provide with this database. We also provide some um, uh, research tools for this. And uh, we also use all these uh, acoustic variables and we actually add uh, fundamental frequency derivative if, uh, if you compare this with my, my previous research. And um, we add all, all this uh, phoneme level, word level labeling, and uh, all, all this time series for each uh, uh, utterance, uh, all uh, summarized uh, features and some tools for browsing and evaluation. This is uh, rather big features which summarize each utterance, all the strengths of utterance and slopes and uh, energy statistics, uh, F0 statistics, F0 derivative statistics, formants. And we also try to put this in some traditional uh, format and uh, MPEG-7 representation. And this is some example of uh, utterances. It's labeled on phoneme level, dot level. Uh, this is F0. This is uh, uh, derivative of the F0. 
and uh, this is uh, some tools which uh, goes with this uh, database, it's uh, evaluation tool, and you can actually continue to evaluate the utterances and add to existing, existing uh, evaluation actually is the biggest problem. It, it requires a lot of uh, effort. Uh, and uh, now we have some prototypes of this tools implemented in Visual Basic. Some of them uh, it's MATLAB uh, compiled code. And uh, this is the, the current state we released so-called mini Arslana 10 stickers out of 61. And we provide this, uh, this tools and we started working with some universities uh, in Russia uh, to actually uh, use this and uh, to continue to evaluate it. And uh, this uh, chickens actually, actually just uh, some association with uh, Russian uh, saying that uh, you should count your chickens at fall. And we are still far from finishing this. Uh, I, I cannot say you that we can count our chickens. It's, it's, it's still Ahead. And uh, for us, it's, it's, uh, it's a kind of hobby. I'm doing this on my home computer. Fortunately, we can do this on our home computers. You know, say if, when you are reading some papers uh, of uh, Lawrence Rabiner of, uh, from 70s, say about uh, at zero. Uh, <laughs> Uh, he, he says that okay, this 10-second uh, uh, fragment was uh, uh, took 30 minutes on this this, this kind of computer. Uh, now we can do this much faster and more <laughs> efficient. Okay, and uh, this is uh, about my uh, research on emotion recognition. And if we have some time or interest, I, I can talk about uh, uh, some of my other research, or I can give just uh, some summary of my other research. Yes? I have a question about your emotional, I mean, uh, emotion recognition. Yeah. Have you tried taking your English system and running it on Russian data, or vice versa, or training on both English and Russian data to try to identify some emotional universal identity? Oh, no, no, not yet. Maybe it's, it would be an interesting twist to do this. Uh, uh, what I... Uh, yeah, emotions. Emotions uh, actually depend on culture and on language somehow. Okay? At least uh, we can uh, see that it depends on some uh, uh, on some uh, formants, and different languages have different uh, formant values. Uh, but even, I also know that when I travel, if I hear somebody arguing with a shopkeeper, it's very clear to me. I can identify when somebody's angry, somebody's sad, even if I know nothing about the language or can't recognize yeah. what they're yeah. saying. So it, it seems like there should be some universals at play. Yeah. Uh, it might not be as good as one trained on I, I, I agree on some. Some kind of this research uh, uh, been done. I, 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 I mean, not for running these recognizers created for different languages, but for uh, using different uh, uh, using people from different cultures to recognize emotions, and a lot uh, of them, you know, uh, many utterances. It's uh, a high correlation of recognizing, especially for anger and happiness. Uh, Klaus uh, Scherer uh, did a lot of research of this kind. Is it recognized as a train using speaker independent data or speaker specific data? Uh, it's uh, it's speaker independent. I, I believe that. 
can I see my better recognition? For so that's a little bit difficult because for speaker, in fact, since you use the pitch, may I feel a bit difficult a lot. Yeah, but and you hope that maybe for anger, pitch is high, but if you make the speaker, you can yell, you actually need to that kind of pitch. Yeah, but we actually normalize this uh, speech uh, somehow, you know. Uh, normalize all the pitches yeah. for that song. Oh, yes, okay. Do you think you would do better if you supplied, if the task was you know, given a neutral and a, some other emotion and you were able to extract features from both the neutral, compare them to features from the emotion, that expression? And do you think you'd do, get a lot from knowing what each person's neutral was in comparison to the emotion that you're trying to recognize? Oh, actually, this is the agenda of this uh, Newcoming research, you know, it's, uh, uh, that, uh, how different this on different levels, on uh, uh, segmental level, I mean, on, uh, uh, in phonetics, you know, on the mean, on uh, sound level, and, uh, uh, and how it, it in, interacts with the language, you know, uh, if, if it's a uh, yes no question. Uh, how emotion interacts with this uh, uh, international pattern for yes/no question, uh, and uh, I, I I did, but I I did not publish uh, uh, some result. Uh, I had some results for emotion recognition for uh, gender, you know, for female and uh, and male, and uh, it's uh, actually it's better. It's better. And for female, it's a little bit better. I, I, I would not uh, say that it's significantly better, but it's a little bit better for female words. Maybe they are more uh, they are good actors. <laughs> uh, Did you get a sense of what feature, which of the features were the most important, or which were not quite as important of the ones that you used? Uh, all these features they are ranked in this important order. I see. So those were all just the best eight. Yeah, the best. Yeah. So. More questions. Well, what, what features would you propose if you were going to do the next iteration? What do you think you're lacking in those that in that feature set? Or do you think there's any room for uh, some spectral features? Some spectral features. Because, uh, and uh, some duration of uh, uh, phonemes, you know. But uh, in, in, this, in this case, you should go deeper uh, on uh, it, 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 it requires deeper analysis, you know, you, you need to extract or say all facative sounds, recognize facative sounds and measure uh, uh, spectrum and measure uh, duration of the sound. And that's what we're trying to uh, find. Uh, you know. How about like higher level features, just like the text? I know that Diane Littman has been doing this work and the feature that she found most useful is just Whatever was recognized. <laughs> you need to know this. <laughs> Doesn't matter what the pitch is. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Uh, uh, At least a month ago. It's a little bit here, but you need to know. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Just because we can see better. There is some research, actually. Uh, it's, it's, uh, in the uh, University of uh, uh, South California, probably. Uh, they analyzed um, uh, call center data and they tried to relate. Uh, and they have some improvement, but not, not significant. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, they are recognizers, uh, recognizer based mostly on uh, it, it's, it's actually coming in the uh, IEEE uh, uh, journal on uh, speech. Uh, 
I, 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 I knew this because I, you know, I uh, served as a reviewer for this paper, and uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it, it, should, it should be published soon. Uh, and uh, it's uh, it's a little bit uh, this, uh, they got this gain on uh, a little bit, but uh, not much, not much. Uh, but I agree, it's it's uh, and especially for a particular person, you know, if they are doing a personal uh, recognizer, then some people they used to uh, use the same words in uh, the same uh, situation. You know. And it would be very interesting to do uh, personal emotional recognition, you know, but uh, it's data, data question. Sorry? Uh, demo. Yeah, I, I, I have some stuff for this. Uh, but let me just uh, do some uh, annotation for this. Uh, speech signal segmentation, it's actually, it goes inside the speech signal and uh, try to extract uh, this quasi, quasi periodical uh, segments based on some uh, approaches. And uh, uh, it was very interesting. Uh, I, I started, you know, I, uh, I, I learned first what people do in this area, and it, uh, a, a bunch of different approaches, and some of them very, very uh, uh, refined, and I uh, feel that it's, it's, it's a very interesting area. I, I, I would like to use, uh, you know, all my skills and wavelets or whatever to uh, do this research, and it uh, uh, turned out that uh, some heuristic algorithm works, works much better than uh, all this technology. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's uh, actually uh, for voiced part of speech for any, any, you know, uh, and so the goal is to align the frames with the periodic. Yes. Signal. Let me let me sh show maybe a couple of uh, pages for this. Yeah, the problem is actually to find this uh, this periods, okay? And uh, for different applications, it's uh, 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 different segmentation are more valuable. Say for speech synthesis, they use uh, this this kind of uh, fragments in order to modify to use this solar. Okay. Okay. So for uh, some basic research, uh, uh, glottal pulse in, in instance is the most important. And, uh, this would be interesting. For feature extraction, it would be probably useful uh, have this. Uh, uh, zero crossing when the signal uh, crossing was the highest peak, and uh, this is the problem. That's what we uh, try to find. And uh, it, it it turned out that uh, I I actually used some similarity measure first to uh, find the similar and use some very simple. Uh, uh, greedy algorithm to actually uh, do this, but uh, it, it turned out then if you try to s simulate how human doing this, it's much better. How human doing this? Uh, I I would start with uh, somewhere in the middle where I I can see this is uh, good uh, developed patterns, and then go in both ways to find other patterns, and then uh, we'll decide at, uh, at the beginning, at, at the end of this uh, voice signal, uh, what uh, is my uh, point. Okay. And uh, I actually implemented this kind of heuristics, and it works much faster and much uh, more, more precise. Uh, okay, and, oops. Well, I have to 
go through this. Uh, yes, this is examples how it works. And uh, for many uh, many approaches, if you have something like this, it's just stuck in this area. Yeah, but this approach is just you know find some uh, no uh, yeah some uh, uh, something close to actually to the um, established pitch, and it uh, goes through the area and then finds uh, the real stuff again. And uh, the only thing which I I would like to add to this is uh, some some kind of. Uh, a reliability measure for each of this uh, point. And uh, I maybe will do this. <laughs> okay, this is a more example. And this is how uh, pitch synchronous uh, evaluation is <laughs> different from traditional approach. This uh, traditional approach is a uh, prop system. Are you familiar with this tool, Prat? Yeah. 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 Um, and uh, it used uh, state of the art of their evaluation. It's uh, uh, frequency uh, domain, and uh, it 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 means uh, uh, and at, at actually it, what it does it. Uh, gets uh, 14 milliseconds, uh, evaluate this, and then assigns this to the first 10 milliseconds. Then step goes. And uh, it missed, it's, it's, it's actually average over this 14 milliseconds. And uh, it missed some uh, fine details like uh, jitter. Uh, and uh, if you, if you can see this is average, it's, 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 it's moved, it's moved, it's shifted, the face <laughs> shifted. <laughs> and uh, okay, and uh, this, uh, the second one, it's, uh, 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 I, I, I used to do research in uh, computer-based learning, and I uh, it, and it was uh, an attempt to apply some uh, speech processing techniques for learning uh, for uh, spoken language learning. And uh, let me show a couple of slides for this. Uh, it's, uh, uh, the modern actually systems they have uh, video, they have uh, graphics, animation, but they don't have feedback. I don't know. Okay. Oops, wrong way. And you can uh, record yourself, and you can compare yourself, but you you don't know what to do if if. if if it's wrong. Uh, some other tools say that it's uh, rank you. It's tourist, something in between, and native speaker. Uh, and uh, it also doesn't tell you what to do if, if, if you're not native speaker. And some uh, use more more tools and uh, they present your speech, they present your loudness, they present your uh, locatives, uh, the length and, uh, uh, and the intensity and uh, they, they also have this dial and you, you can actually uh, and th this is my attempt to say jiao, jiao. Uh, I don't know how <laughs> Uh, how close does it? But it says it's uh, it's it's rather good, good job. <laughs> and this is uh, it's uh, it's a framework for the conference. And but uh, I developed a kind of framework which actually uh, uh, 
uh, has several stages and you follow this to create this uh, uh, course and uh, it uh, consists of some descriptive model, some quantitative model which you should learn from data and uh, then uh, some expert knowledge how to fix this if it's wrong. It's a, it's, it's a combination actually of uh, pedagogy, uh, uh, speech, speech technology and uh, knowledge management. And for uh, and we apply this for Chinese tones and uh, Mandarin has four tones. This uh, tone one high tone, uh, rising tone, low tone, and uh, falling tone. And say this is some examples. One. One. Wow. Wow. And usually, uh, because of uh, European languages, they uh, have a, a, a big difficulty to understand, to recognize this. And what we uh, did, we did some, uh, we have a database of 200 utterances of uh, native speakers. And they uh, learn how how actually people recognize this for natives or some they have actually two people who are close uh, to uh, natives say they uh, they exposed to, to these languages in childhood and for non-native and they see that non non native doing very bad and it's different for different speakers. And uh, then we use this descriptive model, and we use this speech and duration, and uh, created the quantitative model. The, 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 this is quantitative model based on real data. For this for photon. And we created uh, Recognizers which recognize all the tones, and uh, this is uh, duration distribution for tones. And then uh, we use uh, classifiers of neural network to recognize the tones, and uh, we use some diagnostic models which actually rule based. And each signal, each uh, signal uh, was divided in three parts: the beginning, middle, and uh, ending. And for each part, uh, some uh, rules have been developed and some recommendations uh, were done. And, uh, and the course itself consists of uh, three stages. It's, uh, first, it's tone recognition, it's some introduction and some uh, tone recognition exercise, and uh, uh, plus visualization. And then tone portraying, uh, when uh, the learner says this uh, after the teacher, and then uh, some kind of freestyle, then it was just uh, prompt to say something and he tried to uh, do this. And the system evaluates this and uh, gives uh, recommendation how to do this, how to fix it. And this is the prototype and it's a rather simple prototype in MATLAB, but it works. Uh, for, and uh, this is the word bo with second tone, bo, and then uh, it an analyzes and uh, gives you some some recommendation. And it's it's an example, you know, how speech technology combined with other technologies like data management. And, uh, can be useful for learning. And this is actually for discussion how data mining can help. Okay. And
And I, I did some, uh, many other research. This is uh, community of multimedia edge, and it's actually it's, uh, to create a virtual community of researchers who are doing multimedia annotation, and they exchange uh, uh, some uh, algorithm in the form of uh, agents, and these agents are actually executables. And uh, this, uh, uh, it's, and it's, uh, you know, many, many people would not like to uh, provide the source code, but they would be happy if somebody will use the executables. And this is uh, a kind of initiative. And now we are working with some universities to actually spin off this initiative to uh, find partners uh, who are interested in this. Uh, and uh, some other uh, research which actually combine uh, video and uh, speech. Say for this uh, video clip recognition we use uh, uh, hidden Markov models and we use uh, Gaussian mixture models for, for the audio part to recognize clips. Uh, and some uh, more business related applications with a smart voice, it's a, it's a kind of a personal portal uh, and you can use your phone to access this portal and it uh, knows your, your calendar, your contact list and it can get some information from the web and integrate this information and uh, dependent on what uh, now on your schedule, it uh, gives you the most uh, available information for you. Say if you are going to the airport, it gives you information about your flight, is it on time or not, uh, about the parking lot, about the weather uh, condition in, the, in your uh, destination uh, area and so on. It's, uh, and we use uh, voice, voice uh, uh, voice ML for this, and it was also you know in 2000 when all this uh, when we just just were arrived. That's what actually we're doing. At, uh, we just pick up some technology which uh, pops up and uh, and try to spin it off and to. to uh, do some demos how it could be useful for businesses. <laughs>